This Civic Media Podcast is sponsored by UW Organ and Tissue Donation. Organ donations are desperately needed, and now is the right time to become an organ donor. Talk to your family. Get the dot. Save lives. Go to HeroicDeed.com. This is your WCFW Daily News Roundup for 105.7 CFW in Chippewa Falls and 93.5 The Tap in Eau Claire. For WCFW News, I'm James Kelly. Wisconsin Governor Tony Evers is urging residents to sign up for health care coverage when the open enrollment period launches on Friday. In a statement, Governor Evers praised the Affordable Care Act as a game changer for Wisconsin families, which saw over 250,000 residents sign up during the last open enrollment period. Governor Evers has also called for an expansion of Medicaid, claiming it would bring in nearly $2 billion at a crucial time for the health care industry. The open enrollment period will end on January 15th. Wisconsin Attorney General Josh Call has asked the state's Supreme Court to decide if the state legislature should release $50 million for the Act 20 reading bill. The legislation would develop an Office of Literacy to identify and implement literacy testing and curriculum. Governor Tony Evers used line-item vetoes to cut parts of the bill, which Republican legislators called unconstitutional. A Dane County Circuit Court judge ruled that Governor Evers used the authority properly in August, but rejected the request to force the release of funding. In a little over a week of early voting, Wisconsin has already surpassed 1 million total votes submitted. According to election officials, about 1.25 million absentee ballots were requested across the state for the November election, and about 1.1 million have already been submitted through in-person absentee votes and mail-in votes. Election officials are also reminding voters that all ballots must be received by 8 p.m. on Election Day to be counted, and they should only use official sources like the Wisconsin Election Commission website for voting information. Eau Claire city workers say they're struggling with covering a larger area with fewer workers. According to city officials, the city has lost nearly one-third of the average number of park employees over the last 30 years, but the amount of ground to cover has nearly doubled. Community Services Director Lane Berg says the proposed budget includes a new parks position, but even extra money brought into the city last year has failed to keep up with inflation, leading to understaffing concerns. Decisions on the new budget will be made in November. With a few days left before the election, Congressman Derek Van Orden has announced a new sponsorship. Congressman Van Orden says he's now being sponsored by the Wisconsin Dairy Alliance, trying to highlight his work on agriculture in the region. Van Orden was assigned to the Committee on Agriculture during his term in Congress, and the future of farming in Wisconsin has been a major topic for both him and his Democratic challenger, Rebecca Cook. Both candidates say they're looking to provide more support for family farms. The Democratic nominee for the 3rd Congressional District, Rebecca Cook, hosted a pair of events in Eau Claire on Wednesday. Cook traveled to the University of Wisconsin-Eau Claire campus at noon for what she called a voting block party. Cook spoke with students and provided bus rides to help them cast their early votes. On Wednesday evening, Cook held a roundtable discussion on reproductive freedom with local medical providers and residents, listening to heavy personal stories and learning about ways the overturning of Roe v. Wade affected them. The Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources has officially announced the start date for the gun deer season. The nine-day gun deer season will open on November 23rd and close on December 1st. According to a press release, the window is the latest possible window in which the gun deer season can be held under Wisconsin state law. The season is also further removed from the peak of breeding activity for deer, so there could be fewer deer on the move, but colder temperatures and the possibility of snow may contribute to better hunting conditions. The Wisconsin Department of Motor Vehicles has released a new motorist's handbook meant to share information with drivers in an easily understandable fashion. According to a press release, the revised handbook used plain language to clearly convey important information to drivers. The revised handbook has also been updated to include safety advances that have been built into the state's road designs, like diverging diamond interchanges and roundabouts. Officials say they're always looking to make their services more convenient for Wisconsinites. Wisconsin State Superintendent Jill Underly is proposing nearly $60 million of investments to recruit and retain teachers. According to a press release from the Wisconsin Department of Public Instruction, the proposal includes stipends to student teachers to cover expenses and reduce debt along with a Grow Your Own grant program. The proposal also includes an expansion to the Peer Review and Mentoring Grant Program and seeks to review the requirements for licensure to eliminate more barriers for potential teachers. The Dunn County Board has passed a pair of resolutions calling on the Wisconsin State Legislature to expand Medicaid coverage. Wisconsin is one of a handful of states that does not accept expanded Medicaid coverage, which would allow increased coverage for people living at up to 138% of the federal poverty line. 
Health officials Governor Tony Evers and Lieutenant Governor Sarah Rodriguez have also pointed to Medicaid expansion as something that could have saved the HSHS hospitals and Prevea clinics in the Chippewa Valley. The old sign of the former Regency Inn in Eau Claire has been replaced as the new owners work to renovate the property. Under previous ownership, the hotel had become a nuisance property for the city, riddled with crime and in desperate need of renovations. The property was sold earlier this year, and the new owners have been working to clean it up before the new Willow Inn and Suites officially opens. Interior work on the building has been underway for months, and exterior work started in September. The new owners have yet to announce an opening date. Chippewa Valley Technical College will host a Give Vets a Smile event on Saturday. According to college officials, the event will welcome veterans to the school from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. to provide free services like dental care and a lung test. Organizers say the event is a great way for students to get real-world experience in their chosen fields while giving back to veterans by providing free care they may not be able to easily access elsewhere. Veterans will need to register ahead for a dental appointment, but all other services can be done on a walk-in basis. For WCFW News, I'm James Kelly. The Badgers with a win. Hi, I'm Mike Clemens with sports. In college hoops, the Wisconsin men's team with a 78-62 win over UW River Falls last night at the Kohl Center. Guard John Tanjay led the Badgers with 15 points, two assists, and was asked if these preseason games are helpful. Yeah, for sure. I think that's something we all kind of expected going into this this game, first game of the year. Coaches need a look from everyone. You know, we want to see what guys can do and where we can where we can fit in as a team um, for down the line. And now we got some film and um, we can learn with a win. NBA, the Bucks on the road tonight in Memphis. They play the Grizzlies. Milwaukee looking to snap a three-game losing streak. NFL, the Packers shorthanded at practice as they get ready to play the Lions on Sunday. Seven players, including Jordan Love, unable to go. Running back Josh Jacobs dealing with a twisted ankle asked if that's a lot for week nine of the season. Yeah, I mean, but you know, that's just the nature of this business, man. You know, you get later in the season, you have a lot of a lot more guys, you know, take a day or two uh, just to get their body right to be able to to come out and uh, you know play at, at the highest level um, come game day, so that's just this nature of this business. That's Packers running back Josh Jacobs with sports. I'm Mike Clemens. On your entertainment beat, I'm Pete Schwaba. If you're looking to alleviate your pre-election day jitters, there are some good films opening this weekend. The most anticipated release is the film Here, and it is brought to you by the team that made Forrest Gump, including Tom Hanks, Robin Wright, and director Robert Zemeckis. The film basically takes place in a living room while showing the passage of time throughout the story. Is the concept interesting? Yes. Does it sound overly sentimental and like it will tug at your heartstrings? Yes. Will most people probably like it, even though it is not reviewing well? We'll see, but probably yes. Most people don't get too excited about the re-release of a film that came out 11 months ago, but that's not stopping the studio behind Godzilla Minus One, which you can catch this weekend at AMC Theaters as part of the 70th anniversary of Godzilla celebration. Liam Neeson said recently he is moving on from the action genre. This week, Absolution will showcase Neeson's badassery. Let's go to the movies. Most people who cause a nuclear meltdown while working at a nuclear power plant would likely lose their job, not Homer Simpson. In last Sunday night's episode, it was revealed that despite his gross incompetence, Homer was never fired because his father Abe was a P.I. The episode revealed that Abe's partner was taken out by Mr. Burns, who assured Abe that his son Homer would always have a job if Abe didn't snitch. I guess I should have spoiler alerted that. If you haven't watched The Simpsons, you've got 36 seasons to catch up on. The show airs Sunday nights on Fox. Bruce Springsteen is on record as refuting the Forbes info that says he is worth over a billion dollars. The boss says he is not a billionaire, and it's because he spent money on superfluous things throughout his life and does not penny pin. He also says he is a good boss and pays his chums in the E Street Band handsomely. Springsteen says it was never about the money, but always about making great music. He's done well on both fronts. One of these days, maybe he'll have Taylor Swift money. Star of many hit movies, Terry Garr has passed away at the age of 79. Gar starred in films like Tootsie, Young Frankenstein, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, After Hours, and Mr. Mom. Most recently, she played Phoebe Buffay's mother on Friends. Gar was a staple on the late-night talk show circuit and has always made the hosts laugh. The Oscar-nominated actress passed away after a long battle with multiple sclerosis. She was diagnosed with the disease in 2002. Speaking of Friends, Lisa Kudrow, the actress who played Phoebe Buffay on the hit sitcom, spoke of Gar's influence and abilities, saying Terry Gar was a comedic genius and was a huge influence on Kudrow adding that she was grateful for the opportunity to work with Gar. In addition to all her acting credits and awards, Terry Gar also starred in six movies with Elvis Presley, including Viva Las Vegas. For more showbiz fun, tune in to Nightlight with me, Pete Schwaba. 
Weeknights from 6 to 8 p.m. on the Civic Media Radio Network. It is going to be windy with some rain today, and the rain could be heavy at times. It's going to be cold, too. Temperatures dropping into the mid-30s by late this afternoon. We'll see the wind back off a little. Showers will end by trick-or-treat time, but it will be chilly for the ghosts and goblins in the low to mid-30s here this evening. Tomorrow, sunshine, 48. I'm meteorologist Sean Cable. Current temperature, 44. That's your WCFW and the TAP Daily News Roundup from Civic Media. Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. Find more news at wcfw.fm or thetap.fm. The national news cycle never stops, but it can be hard to find news about your local community. Civic Media is dedicated to providing quality local and state news coverage across Wisconsin. With the Civic Media app, you can get notifications about local stories that matter to you and your community. Find the free Civic Media app in your phone's app store and choose notifications from the menu to tell us what kind of news you want to hear about. 